All right, it's February 17th. It's about nine in the morning. Got back in last night. Brought in a bunch of old blue board insulation with me. On this trip, we finished pounding all the tires that we left off. The whole third course isn't completely filled and pounded. I'm gonna run into town and grab some more tires. I couldn't grab any on my way yesterday because of the blue board. I filled my truck up. It's the end of the day. I didn't film a whole lot today. I had someone helping and we were just kind of pounding tires the whole day. But I got the first course or the third course all pounded and leveled. We also put in squishy tire got that filled so tomorrow hopefully we can find some more dirt get some more tires and start on the fourth course all right it's the next morning just got the tractor started gonna clear out this area over here level it out a little bit and use that dirt to make a nice landing pad for the culvert to go in. Once the culvert's in place, I can start laying out the tires for the fourth course. I have a stack of tires over there, but I think I'll have to run into town again and get another round of tires and throw some cardboard in and start filling them. All right, got the whole fourth course all laid out. That culvert's back where it's gonna be. I will have another squishy tire on the fourth course over here with just the way the staggering happened. Over here, I was gonna try and get the culvert right in the seam of the two tires below. But the way the tires were laying out, it just seemed better to put it on top. It's a 10 inch culvert and I have been, it's been about 10 inches per course. So the course below it is 10 inches tall. So hopefully I can get these up to where it's all level and I won't have to pour any concrete or anything around that. So I started stealing dirt back here earlier. There was a bunch of snow here, so I'm letting it melt out. It's finally warmed up a little bit. So once this all melts out, I can get some more dirt from here and start filling in underneath and around the cooling tube and then that back berm as well. You can see I've got a level on. Let's see. So it's sloping away from the building so that any water ends up in there, it'll just drain out away. So I'm just working on this cooling tube, getting it backfilled, and I've been going, adding six inches, eight inches of dirt, and then pounding it down with a sledgehammer to compact it. I want to make sure that it's not going to settle. Just ran the tractor for the last couple hours, filling in the berm a little more. Put some dirt in some of the tires. I haven't really kicked it in or anything, just kind of dumped it in with the tractor. Got the back filled in a little bit. And I leveled out this whole area. This is where I'm grabbing dirt from now. Tomorrow, I'll need to go grab a little bit more cardboard. Get some cardboard in those last few tires there. And then I got a pile of good dirt waiting for me. And start filling them all up and kicking them in. All right, enjoying the beautiful sunset. I just got done. Went around and kind of just shaped 
the berm a little bit, cleaned it up, started compacting it a little bit. All right, it's the next morning. I've been doing a little update video on my plan for the tires. So right now, I've got some dirt in them just to weigh them down so they don't move when I put them where I want them. But the way I'm doing it, I was doing one inch back per course on every course, but I was reviewing some plans on the Earthship app, and it looks like the new Unity model that they're doing, the back curve wall is just vertical. There's no batter at all. So I think I'm gonna stick with that. So those tires will just be on the same plane all the way up. And then it, from the end of the circle, about right here, it tapers out to an inch and a half taper per course. So this tire here will be in line with the tires below it. And then the taper will gradually get bigger until you get over to the end there. The way I'm doing that, I've got this, I set this tire plumb to the tires below it. So that tire will be where it is. And then this tire, this first tire over here, I set back to batter it. I've pulled the tires in between away from where they're gonna be so I could run this string line. And instead of trying to figure out the taper for every single tire, I can just butt these ones up to the string and that should taper the batter all the way back. So for the size of the tires that I'm using, that first course, they're mainly 245s. The next two courses up, I used 235s. And I was gonna do an additional course of 235s for this fourth course, but there just weren't that many 235s left at the tire shops. So I ended up going with the 225s. So what you wanna do is you start with a bigger tire at the bottom, and then as you're working up, the sizes of the tires will get smaller. And I'll show you how uh, the tire sizes work. This 225, this is the width of the tire, which in our case would be the height because they're laying horizontal. So you kind of want everything in a course to be, that first number to be the same. The next number is a percentage. So it's a percentage of this number, I believe. So I like to choose tires that are 60% or over. So this number being bigger than 60. And that what that is, is it's the percentage of this sidewall. So if it's under 60, that means it's a low profile tire and it just makes it hard to pop the tires up and get them up to meet the tire next to it. The last number on there is the rim size. So that's the size of the rim that would go inside the tire. That number isn't really very important as far as building an airship. Um, but yeah, these first two numbers are kind of what I look at. This first number for sure, all the tires in a course need to be the same. This one, I just try and stay above 60. Make it easier to pop the sidewalls up. All right, it's about three o'clock. I think I'm done for the day. I'll be heading back to Big Sky for a few days and then I'll be back next week. Where I'm at is I've got a good amount of the tires. It's half full, kicked in. Still got that gap for the squishy. The only tire I've fully pounded is the one to the right of the culvert. I just wanted to make sure that I could get it all the way up to the top of the culvert and level. You can see how much they balloon up. The tire to the right of that one is actually the exact same size. So you can see kind of how much they expand. Yep, these tires are all empty. I'll have to bring some cardboard next time and get those all filled. Yeah, hopefully I can get the whole fourth course done next time I'm out. I've also got some things to think about. I need to get 
the septic system figured out and the permit in for the county. Going around the back, we also need to get the PEX line in for the water cistern. So I was kind of clearing a little spot back here. I think that's where the cistern will end up. And then I'm gonna have to get a PVC pipe or something used as a conduit under that tire or figure out how to get that PEX line in there. So yeah, that'll all be for next time.